Hi everybody, it's Linda um, and I'm back again. I tell you, three times in three days. Can't keep away now. Um, but anyway, I've got glitter everywhere. You can tell I've been working with glitter, can't you? Um, I thought I'd pop in with this project today. So um, these are little uh, decorative Christmas baubles but they also double up as little treat holders okay I'm sure you've all seen like the really nice big ones that have been posted up all over the place they're certainly all the rage last year okay so what I decided to do was scale mine down um, and I just thought these were quite a nice size for putting on the tree actually if you've got little treats for people um, but the designs just to hold a little something inside. So just for instance, in this one, I've got little items of costume jewelry. Okay, so really it's just for little treats. Okay, so I've got two of these that fit in there quite nicely. Okay, so I think these are really cute little things. Um, I think they're pretty. I've decided to go with using some of the Marvellous Miri Pads again by Hungry Dory, which I um, showed on my project ye um, yesterday. So I've used some of their papers. Um, I'm going to be using this design today. I will quickly run them past you, just in case you haven't seen that video. Okay, so move those out of the way. So I'll do a quick scan through. Okay, so it's a mixture of designs. You've got some Christmas patterns, although that's not really Christmas here. I don't know why I'm saying that. I think it's the colours more than anything. But I just think that these nice, super shiny um, papers are lovely um, for making Christmas decorations. Although the patterns are nice, they're quite generic and can be used for any time of the year, really. Okie dokie. So I put that to one side. So that's the piece I'm using. Now, if you, I've used my Miri pad for this, okay? Um, but if you were going to be making these out of plain cardstock, you can actually get three of these out of one sheet of A4, which is pretty good going, really. Okay, so let me just run all of the measurements and everything past you. Okay then, so this piece of Miri pad paper or Miri card measures six and a quarter inches by three and three quarters. Okay, so I'm going to start by scoring on the long side. So your very first score needs to be at three quarters of an inch. Then you're scoring at one and a half inches, two and a quarter three, three and three quarters, four and a half, five and a quarter and six. Okay, and then on the short side you're going to score at three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter and, oh it's not really straight, and at three. Let me just reinstate that line there. Okay, so now with your cardstock this way around, with the narrow margin here, so you, these are all squares, okay, what you're going to do is fold down to the second score line, pop your cardstock back on your board, and you want to make a notch, okay, so you want to, you want to make a notch at Three eighths of an inch at one and seven eighths of an inch at three and three eighths and at four and seven eighths. Okay, so I can see those, and I know it's probably difficult for you to see them, but I know they're there. So um, I'll see what I can do about making. Um, it clear as we go along because I'm it's dark and it's shiny and I am aware that you might have trouble seeing what I'm doing but anyway now fold your card up again and we're just going to make those notches again okay and it doesn't matter that you're making them here if you just get your stylus and just notch really right on the edge there at three eighths of an inch at one and seven eighths of an inch at three and three eighths 
and at four and seven eighths. That just reflects the notches that you've made here, okay, so they're opposite each other all the way along. Keep hold of your stylus and you will need a ruler because we're going to do some extra scoring. So I'm going to pop that in front of me. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so I made my first notch there as we saw. So all I'm going to do is score down to this corner here. So that's, that's that line there. Okay, and then back up. I'm just going to go all the way along. Okay, so those reflect that line there. And I'm just going to do exactly the same down here. Okay, so I've done all of that and I'm not too sure if you can see it, but it should be, if you're doing the same as me, it should be looking like that. So you've got your, your triangles, so to speak, in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now before I do anything else is do some burnishing. Okay, so that's some of the burnishing done. Now, in order to be able to um, try and burnish or at least crease these lines, we need to do some cutting first. So all you're going to do, I'll turn the card over, you want to cut up right up the centre of each of these bottom vertical score lines. Okay, so we're just going to snip up like that all the way along and then we're going to repeat the process on the opposite side. Turn it around. Okay, and also what you're going to do, this narrow section here, just going to wedge and cut that away and the same here like that okay so now that you've done that it enables you to oh actually no now that you've done that we're going to do some cutting away so the bits that you're going to be cutting are the two I've just shown you here okay so then you're going to fold this one down and you're going to cut away each of the squares that are on the end of these triangles okay so it's it's every other square so cut that one away fold that under cut this one away fold that one down Okay, so it's looking like that and you're going to do the same on the other side. So turning it over, you've got the first triangle here, so you're going to get rid of that one. Fold that section in, get rid of this one. OK, 
Okay, so it's looking like that now. Okay, so you can see we've lost each of the sections that have got a cross in them. Okay, put that to one side. Now we've done that, it enables you to just be able to fold down on this diagonal and crease it with your finger. So I'm going to come down this side first and then I shall go back the other way. So you're just folding and creasing. Okay, and then I'm going to come back this way. Okay, and then we'll do the same with this side. Okay, so you can see they're all creased there on the back. So what I'm going to do now is turn it over, put some double-sided tape just along this, this section here. And I'm just going to bring this over and stick that down. Okay, so we're ready to start putting or assembling the box together. So you'll find when you put pressure here, these bits fall in on each other like that. So I'm going to start, there's my back section. So I'm going to start by bringing the side sections across and you bring this over so it makes a nice square and this line sits nice and flush along the edge here. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of double-sided tape for that. So just take a little bit of care, get it as nice and as straight as you can, and then press it into place like that. Okay, and then we're going to do the same with these sections here. Okay, so bring that one across. That's going to go across there like that. So I'm just going to put a bit of double-sided tape on this piece. nice and square as you can and press it down firmly and then we're just going to bring this section over okay, so press that in bring it across and make a nice square on the bottom like that Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Right, now then, for the top, you want a little template. Okay, so this measured three quarters of an inch square and I scored it at three eighths of an inch down this down the center, turned it and three eighths of an inch again down there, like that. Okay, and then I found the centre, I did mark it with a sharpie and I simply took a handheld punch and I punched out the hole in the centre. So this is now going to be used as like a little template for punching out the holes around the lid. So you need to be fairly careful here. Okay, so what you want to do is line that up square on your little flaps. Pop this in and then just punch okay and I'm going to go all the way around okay so that really is that. So now it's just a question of drawing everything in. So you need to have a little bit of ribbon 
or something on which to hang it you can use cording trim okay this is a fairly wide ribbon I think that's probably about a quarter of an inch wide um, you could use something narrower but I want to use black because I think it tones nicely with this okay so I'm just going to cut myself off a piece and make a loop Okay, so there's my loop, and now I'm just going to start by drawing in the sides. I think I'm going to go from the back seam first for this one. Okay, so there's my back seam, so I'll pop the ribbon through here, feed it through. Okay, and then you want to go for the one that's opposite. Pull that over. Just draw them in till they meet like that. Okay. I'm going to bring this one over just folding the sides in applying a little bit of pressure just to make it loosen up a bit it's not so stiff right okay so we've got that one going now for this side one Where's my stylus? One? It might help. So pull that through, and then we're going to reach across, and then as you draw it all together, you'll find it all closes really nicely. So let's pop that through here. Feel it all start to like yield as it all comes across. Okay, and you sort of finally feel it pop <laughs> and it just meets up just like that. Okay, um, you could finish off with a pretty little tag or whatever, but it's you know, remember to put your treats in before we go to all that trouble. <laughs> decide what you're putting in fill it and then do it up but that really is as simple as they are but I think they're really really very very attractive um, and just a nice way of giving small gifts um, and perhaps adding a few decorations to your tree as well okay so that's it from me um, I hope you did like that I did want to say actually um I followed a video demonstration by the Paper Pixie who I think was making them in this size so um, I took her idea of using a diagram because it just made sense because I knew you were going to have trouble um, probably seeing off of the glare of the foil anyway okay so um, yeah I thank her for that tip that was very useful and I hope you found it useful too um, I also wanted to say um, that everything that I used here, well everything, I didn't use an awful lot, <laughs> the mirror pads that I've used, um, things like my scissors and stuff like that um, are available from Craft Stash so I will be putting affiliated links over on my blog and at the bottom of this video. Craft Stash um, ship free to the United Kingdom if you place an order of over £15 and um, they also do ship to US mainland, Australia, Canada and Europe so if you follow my links it'll take you to the site you can select your currency and you can order if you wish from Craft Stash. Okay so that's it from me thank you for watching and I'll be back with another project for you very shortly so bye for now.